Um, thank you very much. So my name is Marcus Manuel. I'm the director of a program that provides support to ministers of finance in fragile states to make their budgets more transparent and more accountable. Um, I just want to say t two blocks of things. First of all, and this is the primary thing, congratulations. Congratulations to Oxfam. Congratulations to uh, Matthew and his team for doing something that should have been done a long, long time ago. And I think it's great that it has been done. I think the work, as you say, the slog that has to be involved to do that is really tremendous. And it's great to see this. And I think this today is partly just a, should be a celebration and congratulations of what's been achieved there. Uh, like Liz, I'm sad too. Uh, this should have happened 15 years ago, maybe not five. 15 years ago, I was in Uganda, uh, helping Uganda put together for the first time, recording this in kind of information, outturn at a sectoral level. Um, working with the IMF and the World Bank through the HIPICS, and they agreed under HIPIC they would monitor poverty spending. So from then, it was clear we had this information. So we should not have been here in this situation. It's deeply depressing that we're now here uh, and back again. And that's really what I want to say about where we go next. I mean, there is congratulations, but I also feel uh, it's like saying congratulations for making base camp. We need to get to Everest, and we are only at the base camp, which I'm sure Matthew is aware of. I mean, let me just spell out some of the reasons why we're only at base camp. Um, there's an ODI paper that's cited in Matthew's document. The targets are poorly designed. They don't add up. If you add them all up, it's more than 100% of government expenditure. There's a very fundamental problem about the targets. <laughs> the targets are also poorly focused. We don't care whether there are CAT scanners in a, the central government's hospital. What we care about is the amount of vaccines or primary health care workers, if you're caring about where the poor need it. Or as has been made for Path in South Africa. It's not necessarily where it is, it's where it is at a local level that really matters. So just monitoring total health care expenditure is not enough. Monitoring total education expenditure is not enough. So we, you know, we need to be careful. You know, even of, let's be great that some have got to this point, but actually, let's be clear, if it's all going on tertiary health care, this really is not what we're all, you know, know matters for the poor people and the people who are suffering and need to deliver on the MDGs. Um, and also, please, let's not be naive. Um, these targets are very poorly monitored and enforced. Uh, if we think that there aren't district officials who think, oh, I haven't got any money to get fuel for my own private transport, but I notice the primary education maintenance budget has got some money in it, I shall write a check and say it has come from this fund. Because no one's enforcing that or checking what's happening on, that is happening. So even if we think we know what's being recorded, let us not necessarily kid ourselves that that's what's actually happening on the ground. I just give it as an example of if we really want to, you know, to take this forward, this is the kind of level of detail, and as I say, the devil's in the detail, absolutely, it, it really matters in all of this. More optimistically, where do I think we can go from here? I think there's a much broader group of collaborative partners who could work on this. I mean, there's lots of civil society, and it's great to have Oxfam and ActionAid here. But I think there's, an, uh, there's a real issue here and a potential to overcome a collective action failure here. And I take that because I met with the Minister of Finance in an African country who was very progressive, and I pointed out to him in the last three years his spending on primary education had gone down. And he said, no, 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 that's not right. It's been going up. We've been massively investing. It has gone up, and the share has gone up. I said, no, no, it's gone down. He said, no, no, it's gone up. And I said, OK, I will forensically take you through this. And after half an hour, he said, you're right, it's gone down. Now, he didn't even know in his country, and this is one of the best performers that we're talking about here, he didn't even know which direction his spending was going. So unlike guns, where people at least know how many people are dying from guns, people don't even know what's happening in their own countries. And I think it's not just a matter of, you know, we need to campaign and get governments to do stuff. Actually, governments themselves are often unaware of what's going on. I mean, that's the tragedy, but that's also, I think, where, where the potential can, can exist. Where I think there is clear condemnation and where we should be clearly saying, shame on you, is for the IMF, the World Bank, the bilateral agencies. How can you spend billions of dollars in the last 15 years on budget support, and you can't tell me how much this country has spent on primary health care. I mean, how can you do that? I mean, just on any sort of sensible, rational basis, it, it can't be possible that you haven't, haven't done it. Um, and Matthew and I have discussed about, you know, the IMF says, well, it's, well, well you know, it's the World Bank's responsibility, so you shut up glass. No, no, it's actually UNICEF's responsibility. No, they can't do it. Actually, no, it's, you know, I... I don't care. <laughs> Just sort it out. So I think holding them to account, and I think with Matthew, I probably agree, it's probably the IMF, actually, and it's best to go for one institution. 
um, to sort it out. Because they will then force the cooperation that's needed to make it happen across the international community to do that. But So being very clear, and the point is, the impact of that, if you don't even know where the money's being spent, why of course you're not going to get your health workers paid. Yeah? The impact on the poor of the failure collectively to deal with this in the past on aid, I just think if you did an impact survey, you'd be, well, you'd be frightened by what the damage, and we wouldn't be talking about this, we'd be resorting to sort of Geldof humanitarian, you know, the number of people who have died because collectively people have failed to do this uh, is extraordinary. And of course now, as aid becomes less important in this century, which is great, and government spending becomes even more important, it becomes even more important to, to know this. So, look, congratulations on what you've done. It is a great thing, you know, and it has been impossible to un uncrack this for the last 15 years, and you've really made a, you know, a big change on that. So congratulations on that. I think there's a lot more collaboration that we can do to take forward, look forward to having that conversation in the future. In that sense, I think building on this would be uh, tremendous and look forward to working with you and others for it. Thank you.